Good evening, classmates and professor. My name is Jose Escobar. I'm part of Group A, which also has Siobhan Patel, David Olivas, Caffrey Gold, and Samantha Sombrano. And we're going to be speaking about the commodity sugarcane and forecasting. A little history about sugarcane. In 8000 BC, the sugarcane was domesticated in New Guinea where they ate it raw. From 800, from 8000 BC to 600 BC, it was traded in the southeastern Asia via seaborne trading, including China and India. India was actually the first to crystallize the sugarcane. In 640 CE, China was the first to use cultivation techniques, which is like a little small-scale production, mass marketing. Now, from 1480 CE to 1540 CE, Portuguese explorers brought sugar over to the New World in Brazil. From 1710 to 1770 CE, sugarcane represented 20% of all European imports, um, while also in the West Indies, they produce 80% of all sugarcane production. Now, sugar in the sugar market, there are two forms of sugar, sugarcane stock and beef, which is also known as people care's plant. In America, 50 to 60% of all sugar is produced by the sugar beet, while it's only 30% for the rest of the world. Both are used in all forms of ingredient, including brown sugar, ethanol, sugar, and other ingredients which we use all the time. Sugarcane is produced by cutting down the sugarcane stalk and producing it with bone tar from cows. Recently, sugar, cane, sugar has been uh, processed by coal based activation carbon in order to appease everybody, but mostly with vegans. Now, in the sugarcane market, as you can see from 1 to 10, from Brazil all the way to the United States, the sugarcane stock is mostly produced in warm climates, uh, with Brazil being number one, as I said, and the United States in the top 10. Now, based on this, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to David Olivas, and he's going to speak more on exploratory variables. Thank you, Jose. And right now, we would like to go over the five explanatory variables that we will be using. Uh, the first will be the farm output subsidies to operators. The second explanatory variable will be the freight transportation service index. And the th third explanatory variable would be the unemployment rate for Brazil for people ages 15 and over. The fourth explanatory variable would be raw cane sugar and sugar mill production index. And the fifth and final explanatory variable is going to be the producer price index for pesticides and other agricultural manufacturing products. The farm output subsidies to operators is a comprehensive measure of, total, um, of the total amount of subsidies provided to farm operators across the United States. We chose this measurable data set due to the unique impact it provides to cane sugar. The United States government spends more than 20 billion U.S. dollars a year on subsidies. As a result, fructose, corn syrup, and other corn byproducts have decreased in price, causing an increase in demand, which may create a negative relationship with cane sugar. Another explanatory variable is a freight transportation services index, which measures for higher trucking, freight railroad services, inland waterway traffic, pipeline movement, and air freight. Agriculture greatly depends on transportation services to move products around the country. Therefore, if the freight transportation index increases within the United States, movement of agricultural products increase as well. This in turn opens local markets to cane sugar in parts of the country which were not previously available. We believe this creates a relationship with cane sugar demand as well as prices. Another explanatory variable would be the producer price index for pesticides and other agricultural manufacturing chemicals. Uh, due to the benefits of pesticides and other chemicals and increasing crop production, it aids our assumption that, price, that prices for cane sugar must be increased as cost of production does as well. Okay, and the next one would be uh, the raw cane sugar and sugar cane milk production, which measures raw cane sugar and sugar cane milk production within the United States as a whole. As global population as well as the United States population increases, the demand for sugar has too. Cane sugar, which started as a precious, luxurious commodity, has now become a commodity which can be bought and sold by anyone, anywhere, anytime. Sugarcane can also be found as one of the many ingredients in thousands and thousands of products within the United States as well as in the world, which leads our, to our reasoning on why production has a deep relationship with pricing. 
And now I'm going to send it over to my teammate, Shimon. Thank you, David. Uh, we assemble our data sets from several data sources. Our data set consists of 11 variables in all, including the response variable, which is global price of sugar. And the other variables are date, meal by product uh, uh, PPI, unemployment rate, a producer price index of chemical and pesticides, producer price index of sugar manufacturing unit, producer price index of rail transportation, transportation service index, harmonical index of customer prices, farm output subsidies, and the exchange rate of US and Brazil. In the visual analysis, we created the histograms and QQ plot of our response variable, which is global price of sugar. It is clear from both the graph that the data is right or positively skewed. We can apply log transformation to make it a normal distribution. Here is the correlation analysis from the correlation plot. We can observe that the employment rate and the output subsidies are negatively correlated to our response variable, which is obvious. As more subsidies are offered, the price of sugar has to go low. The price, the price PPI of sugar, chemical and pesticides are positively correlated, which indicates that the increase in either of them will increase the price of sugar. I hand over to Carefree for regression analysis. Thank you. Uh, so our data sets, we extracted the data from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Um, so initially on our research, we decided to pick nine independent variables. And um, as we transition to the next slide, I'll be able to show you uh, the five independent variables that we selected. So uh, you can see here from the slide that out of the five independent variables that we selected, that 67% um, of those independent variables would positively impact the global price of sugar. Um, in addition, we can also see that if all of our independent variables remain constant, um, essentially the price of sugar would be $26.06 per pound. So as we transfer over to the next slide, uh, we'll be able to see um, how we go ahead and forecast the global price of sugar, essentially by taking the intercept and we multiply it by the coefficient. Um, so now I'm going to transfer over to Samantha, where she'll be able to talk about the conclusion. Thank you, Kefri. So in conclusion, um, we realized that the price rise at zero is a result of inverse correlation of unemployment and subsidies. The increase in one uh, unit of PPI sugar will drop the global price of sugar by $1.81 per pound. The increase in 1% of unemployment rate will drop the global price of sugar by $0.03 cents per pound. The increase of one unit uh, PPI chemical and pesticides will raise the global price of sugar by $0.07 cents per pound. And the increase in one unit of output subsidies will drop the global price of sugar by $0.01 cent per pound. And that's keeping in mind that all other variables remain constant. And that's pretty much it. Thank you everyone for watching.